and guys practice hard. I think they're excited for the atmosphere and looking forward to it. And got a lot of work to be done. Feel like we're behind uh, playing catch up. So much to prepare for. Uh, they do a lot more defensively than they probably have in the past. Um, Showing a lot of different looks, and um, and then offensively they always have a ton to prepare for. So I think sometimes when you know the history of somebody, it can be worse because you try to prepare for everything you've seen. It makes it hard to do, and uh, just got to get them ready. And that's why I think we're getting closer. <coughs> when when you're trying to do that, when you're trying to prepare for everything you've seen, how how do you balance that with just kind of also resting on all the concepts and everything you've taught the core stuff that you're built on defensively and offensively? Core stuff doesn't change much. You just try to expose them to what the opponent does is different from what you see day to day. And uh, Gus has always had a lot of different things. I mean, they got different tempos, they got different formations, they got different groupings. They got it's just a lot to prepare for. It's a lot of offense um, at the end of the day, and um, you got to you know be careful that you don't overload your kids with too much and paralyze them. Coach, knows uh, for Ben was an All SEC selection or SEC lineman of the week and. Grade is really, really high. Uh, can you just talk about how he's fit in? And I know he split a lot of time early on with Cade, but it seemed like he carried a little bit more this past week because of the center situation. Yeah, he got to play a lot more. It seems like I forget all the games, but he's you know he's been major role, minor role, big role. You know he's taken on all roles. He's kind of had that kind of you know career when you think about. It. He was starting and playing, and he got the the, the broken leg and uh, bounce back from that. He's done a tremendous job. He was playing uh, really good the other night, getting a lot of movement, playing with good pad level. And uh, usually when Ben plays well, we play well. Uh, he helps give us some, some power over there on the right side. So uh, he did a nice job in that game and graded out well and was happy to get him uh, that award. Coach, what is your relationship like with the state troopers that escort you on game days and particularly Officer Sadler? Uh, it's a joy. It's, it's, it's such a privilege to have a relationship with someone that gives so much to our community, to our state, and gives so much back to us. So I uh, really enjoy Officer Sadler. They are with us year-round for events and uh, obviously game days and, and uh, traveling, but I uh, really appreciate the job those guys do. They make, they make life much easier on us and much safer in our communities. And uh, so right now, it's probably one of the most thankless jobs out there. You guys have played in some tough atmospheres and against some good teams in the SEC West road games. Uh, is that what you would chalk up the, the uh, tough times you guys have had in, in those environments? I would chalk it up to good teams. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's uh, good football teams, um, good football programs. The atmospheres aren't really any different than playing on the East. Um, I would say the level of talent and the teams we've played have been pretty good. And uh, just hadn't figured out a way to win one. we got to do that. Coach, kind of going off of that, in those matchups, you're getting up a lot of rushing yards, and a lot of good rushing offenses in those games, like you said. Is that going to be one of the bigger keys in this game, stopping that run? It's always important. I mean, you start with a line of scrimmage. If you can't run the ball and they can, you're probably in trouble. And um, if you give up explosives, it's probably a bigger sign than even the rush game. But, uh, you know, we have struggled in those games to stop the run and uh, something that we take pride in and um, have done a better job this year uh, at stopping it. But this is a team very similar to ours caliber of running, being able to run the ball. They are a, a stubborn run team. They're committed to the run and uh, want to find different ways to do it. And uh, they've always done that well. And then in terms of preparing for, for Auburn's offense, and you said that everything they present offensively, how important is it to, uh, to, uh, the first and second downs or make Auburn a one-dimensional offense again into this third and Oh, it's critical. It's, it's, if they're playing, well, anybody, if they're playing third and seven or more, eight and nine or more, you're going to be at an advantage. You know that. That's just hard to do to get people off schedule, especially the ones that are committed to the runs. And like I've told you all before, they have, you know, the point of attack is three different places on every play. You know, it's the quarterback, it's the back, and then there's something outside of that, whether it's an RPO or a, some kind of screen game. They're always making you defend all over the field. And that's college football now, and they do a good job of it. So getting to third and long is a bigger problem than uh, being able to win third and long. No, when you guys last visited Auburn, the penalties were what probably had you the most 
you know, upset after the game with just some other characteristic stuff. Do you kind of harp on that with this week, <coughs> using those as examples with maybe some of your younger players? I mean, we've had really good uh, composure in most of our games, uh, and that's what I try to harp on is the positive of we've shown good composure. We haven't retaliated uh, stupid penalties and swung on guys. And, you know, you're going to have aggressive penalties. I want our guys to play aggressive, but I just don't want them to play stupid. And we did some dumb things in that game, but that wasn't the result of the game. The ultimate result was our inability to stop the run and inability to run the ball. I think this is the – it's a point that you, your plane is coming off a bye week. How much of an advantage is is a is a bye week? How much more do you put in, or how much better does the team get? Do you think? You know, in the early in the season, I don't know how important those are because I don't know that you're to the point where you need recovery. So I, I would say the first four or five weeks of the season, it's a push if somebody has a bye before you or you have one before them. But as it gets later in the year, it has an effect because you're able to get guys back. Because what happens, the cumulative effect of this, the games in sequence, you lose guys and you don't get recovery time. And when you get recovery time, you can bring some guys back. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. We all got the same number of bye weeks, and most of us have had the same kind of stretch. You know, Auburn had a, a really rough stretch uh, there earlier in the year where they played consecutive teams. So um, it's just, just the way it fell this year, I guess. Kirby, you're, you're a coach's full voter, I guess. Um, the uh, latest college football rankings come out tonight. Some curiosity uh, for folks just about like the top four. How hard is it for you when you put together your stuff to decide who's four, who's five, or I don't know how much time you spend on it? I don't spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think it matters a whole lot more the next coming weeks yeah. uh, than right now. So I don't spend a lot of time on it. And don't 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 worry about it too much. It's hard because I don't actually get to see all the teams all the time either. You know? right. So I'm sure those other guys don't either. You try to watch them, but. It's hard to watch every team because you're playing games too. Coach, you talked about the red zone and uh, having to maybe settle for too many field goals as opposed mm -hmm. to shut down. During practice, in normal week of practice, how do you deal about addressing that and what can you actually do to uh, we We've spent a lot of time on the red zone. We, we start with it in meetings actually tomorrow. We talk about a game plan. Um, we do it good on good every week. We take a series and, and we've been fortunate defensively to have some good red area series is where we get to put that defense out there and go against our offense and our offense has won a lot of those battles against our guys so I know they're capable we just uh, haven't finished off drives and a lot of ours didn't get to the red area because you know red area statistics lie because it looks like we're doing pretty good but a lot of them are field goals and a lot of them are outside the red area field goals um, but we're not finishing off into the touchdowns and we got to do a better job of that. When you look at the run blocking this year how much and you evaluate the O-line, how much does what a, the way defenses are playing you stacking the box kind of figure into you? They're, they're not stacking it any more than they have ever. I mean, it's not like, oh, there's more this year than there was last year. The fronts we see this year are very similar to the fronts we see last year. There's not a whole lot of difference of, as far as that goes. Um, they're not playing them different. We're probably not hitting as many explosive runs, and we're you know definitely not hitting as many explosive passes to try to loosen them up. Uh, we probably see more hard boxes consistently than in the past. We would see the same boxes, just not as often. So if they were doing 70% hard box last year, it might be 80% hard box. But the boxes are very similar to what they what they normally are. What's Jake sort of changed about himself since like, <coughs> pairing that 2017 game against Auburn to now? Uh, he's just older. I mean, that was one of his first real road games that I remember. I mean, Notre Dame would have been up there, but – that was his first SEC atmosphere that was uh, of that caliber. And um, he did some good things in that game. Um, but it's uh, always a challenge when you go play on the road. I don't care what year you are. And uh, he's got a lot of experience going on the road in the SEC. So, I mean, we've got a lot of guys on offense that have played. So, I'll, I mean, it's a great atmosphere and it's tough. But our kids got to go play. And it's not – none of those fans are going to go out there and play in the game. So, we got to go play in the game. Was the South Carolina game – having to face a guy like Javon Kim off the middle. Is that something you kind of look at when you go into facing a D-line like this with obviously Derek Brown in the center, big guy, like kind of the same mold? Hey, everybody's got one. They, they, I mean, Kentucky had a big old nose, man, that was 380 pounds and was hell on wheels. And Florida had two guys in there that were really good players that will be drafted. Missouri's got uh, two that will be – I mean, I'm not saying those people are Derek Brown. Now, don't get me wrong. Derek Brown is a, in a class of himself, and he is – destructive but 
there's 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 guys like Ken Law in our league, and Ken Law's a really good player. So when you come to the SEC, you better be ready because there's guys across the board that play like that. How about Cager's looking practice last two days? He's been good. He's taking all his reps. He's catching balls. He's doing what he's supposed to do, and hopefully we can keep him healthy. Um, so I know right before the season started, you spoke about the the balance of kind of spending time with, with your family throughout the season, have that balance. But now that you're kind of you've gone week to week here for a while, I know it's always week to week, but. How special are those moments, I guess, when, when you get to have your kids and your wife down on the field celebrating with them and those moments like that? Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, other than the relationship with the players and the coaches on the staff, that's that's why I do this is to do it for my kids and for my wife. And, I mean, I spend a lot of time away from them. So when I get to see them after a game, win or lose, it brings everything back in perspective. I mean, so much is put on winning and losing. and. Everything matters if you win, and everything's still just just die. I mean, it's just terrible if you lose. Then you see your kids and your wife, and that's not really what's important. And uh, I think people lose sight of that a lot of times. That that keeps things in perspective for me, and uh, it's what's important to me. I want to be remembered for being a, a great husband and father a lot more than I do a coach. You, you uh, gave us an update yesterday on Trey Hill saying you, you thought he was going to practice, but you needed to see him. How is he, and, and is Tyreek McGee any closer to coming back? Uh, I don't know about Tyreek. hasn't been on practice uh, any of this week. He's um, he's been on the bike. He's been running some. He may he may clear and he may be able to help us. But uh, I don't know right now. Trey's been fine. He's taken all the reps and done everything. Coach, to follow up on KJ, I mean, it's obvious that he's dealing with a chronic situ a chronic situation that he can't get well while he's playing in the season. Mm -hmm. right, is he is he doing something special here? Like you know, no, I don't want to. I want to keep playing. Uh, through the pain as opposed to, you know, a guy like him's a graduate, just say shut it down and I'm going to move on to the rest of my life, you know? No, I, don't, I think he's not, I mean, you say special. I mean, he's very tough. He's playing with a tough injury to deal with, but it's, I mean, his choice. And once the doctors clear him, he has to make a choice on whether he wants to play or not. And I absolutely, we're, he wants to play. He's a competitor. That's why he came here. The last thing he wants to do is say, well, I'm going to take this week off and not play in this game and, and, and go try to heal up. That's not his perspective because he knows that every game matters and that uh, it matters to our team. And he's a team player. He's a, he's a competitor. I mean, he he wants to go out and make plays. And uh, he wants to do that for the brothers on his team. And he's not going to step away unless it has a chance to injure himself worse. And that's a medical decision. Getting back to that combination, Derek Brown and Marlon Davidson, in the years you've been coaching, as far as the senior combo goes, kind of how they stack up. Yeah, they're special. They've been there for a long time. They've done a tremendous job. They're well coached. I mean, I would think in the SEC there's been combinations like that. I mean, I'm not going to say they're the, the ones that the only ones that have ever done it, but they are special and they're talented. And uh, we recruited both of them to the wire and uh, didn't get either one. But they're good players. Is preparing for this offense any different from the last couple of years where you've had Stidham, who's definitely more prepared or not as mobile as Nick's is? It's different. I mean, they they, they they allow Nix to do more with the run game. I mean, he, he, he pulls it. He makes good decisions. He uh, he very rarely is wrong when it comes to, you know, pulling the ball. And he he, he, he runs the offense well. You can tell uh, that it's more what Gus has been used to, um, as opposed to Stidham, who probably was more of a passer. But he was a good athlete, too. Uh, Kirby, I uh, wanted to ask you, uh, Lawrence, I know they're all big, all the games are, but Notre Dame, Florida, probably two highest-ranked opponents this year. When you look at how Lawrence has performed in those two games, I mean, he's really played well. What What is it you think that's about him knowing his personality that, that has allowed him to kind of step up and be kind of at his best in those biggest moments? Just maturity. I mean, he's, he's very mature. He's older. He's uh, been around. I mean, he's played in big games at Miami. So uh, maturity is the biggest thing is that um, he's, the moment's not too big for him. And uh, he's not one of these guys that gets overwhelmed with playing on a big stage. I think he was kind of made for it. He likes it. He embraces it. Two more questions. What's impressed you about Jordan Davis this year? Um, probably his consistency. I mean, he had the, 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 the injury. You know, he couldn't play against South Carolina, and that, that, that affected us. But he uh, tried to go, and he's been dealing with the ankle injury. and. Other than that, he's been really consistent, and uh, he's, uh, he's, he's he embraces um, his role, and um, he's tough to block. I mean, he's he's a big part of our run game, run stopping game.
What difference does uh, Whitlow make for their running game? Yeah, he's, he's a big difference. He's 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 a, a stud SEC back. He's physical. He's hard to bring down. I mean, he, he makes their run game tick because their run game is meant to be powerful downhill and bruising. And uh, young kids come in come in and done a good job of that. And uh, But Whitlow is a difference maker when it comes to that.